You believe that here tonight? Give the Lord. Praise all over the house. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. I know just the other week we sang this song. I think it's the preacher's favorite song, and it's one of mine. But I'm thankful tonight that I've been changed. I was telling the preacher, he told my wife on the way home, today has been probably one of the most stressful days that I've had at work in a very, very, very long time. The phone rang off the hook. Customers upset. Demands of me creating doors in the system. Customers coming in. I ate at my desk with the phone ringing off the hook. Short of help. You say, well, Brother Farley, I sound like a bad day. Well, it could have been a really bad day if I didn't know Jesus. Because I remember those days when I would leave and I'd probably been doing some things that I should have been doing. But I'm thankful that it happened today. It could happen yesterday or tomorrow. Tomorrow may be just as bad today. But because I have been changed, my outlook was not in a bottle. But my outlook was to come to the church, come to the house of God, and depend on the one that changed me a long time ago. I've been changed from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Sometimes I don't act like it. Sometimes you don't act like it. But I'm thankful for the grace and mercy of God that I can go to Him. I can go to Him on my hands and knees. Say, God, you can relieve the stress. And you can relieve the pressure in just one moment. Speak to my soul. And I'm thankful tonight that guess what? My life was filled with disappointment. I could not live up to the world's demand. I lived alone in fear and deep confusion. What left to do, cause I could do all.
chapter number 14 tonight, Judges chapter 14, and uh, I am, uh, I've got a pretty good bit of material here, and I'm not planning on keeping you too long, amen, <laughs> I was waiting on somebody to, uh, well, y'all want to stay here, we can, praise the Lord, uh, <laughs> Uh, Judges chapter 14, I promise you, I'll probably preach a lot longer than, uh, than I probably should have, uh, but Judges chapter 14 tonight, and uh, when I look at uh, the story and the life of Samson, I've found, as we've been going through here, uh, there's a lot that uh, we can learn and see. Uh, Jen, if you can, uh, they've got the, uh, it's turned off right there. Uh, you know how to fix that. It's uh, actions, something like that. And show on display, display only, or something like that. I told you it's going to be an electronic uh, technology mess up kind of night. Uh, but if you have your Bible, that's why you always ought to take your Bible to church. Amen. Amen goes right. I mean, if I go fishing, I'm going to take uh, my fishing rod and all that stuff. Uh, nothing wrong with having the technology and all that and putting it on the screen. I will continue to do that, but it's a good idea uh, to carry your Bible uh, when you go to church. Uh, you can write things down if you're the kind of folk that write in your Bible. Uh, I have some Bibles that I write in and some that I won't. Uh, but Judges chapter number 14, and let's look at verse number 10. There we go. Thank you. Uh, she's got a fix for us. Judges chapter 14 and verse number 10. Uh, we're going to read down a few verses so you can just remain seated. Uh, Judges 14, verse 10 said, So his father went down unto the woman. Remember, uh, in the beginning part of the chapter, uh, he saw a woman that was a daughter of the Philistines, and he said, I've got to have her for my wife. And so verse number 10, we pick up the story. So his father went down unto the woman, and Samson there uh, made there a feast, for so used uh, the young men to do. And it came to pass, when they saw him, that they brought thirty companions to be with him. And Samson said unto them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, uh, if ye can certainly declare it within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will uh, give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. Uh, but if you cannot uh, declare it to me, then shall you give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And they said to him, put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. He said to them, out of the, uh, excuse me, out of the eater came forth meat, out of the strong came forth sweetness. They could not in three days expound the riddle. It came to pass on the seventh day uh, that they said unto Samson's wife, Entice thy husband that he may declare unto us the riddle, lest we burn thee in thy father's house with fire. Have ye called us to take that we have? Is it not so? And Samson's wife wept before him, said, uh, Dost thou hate me, and lovest me not, and hast put forth a riddle unto the children of my people, and hast not told it me? And he said to her, Behold, I have not told it to my father nor my mother. And he said, I, and he, Excuse me, and shall I tell it thee? And she wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted. And it came to pass on the seventh day that he told her. Because she lay sore upon him, and he told the riddle to the, excuse me, and she told 
the riddle to the children of her people. And the men of the city said unto him on the seventh day before the sun went down, uh, what is the sweet, or what is sweeter uh, than honey? And what is stronger than a lion? And he said unto them, if you had not plowed with my heifer, uh, ye had not found out my riddle. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ascalon and slew 30 men of them and took their spoil and gave change of garments unto them which expounded the riddle and he, his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion whom he had used as his friend. I'll preach a little while on this thought. When beauty turns to bitterness. When beauty turns to bitterness. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you, God, that you'd help us. I ask you, oh God, that you'd speak to us, Lord, right now. Uh, give us what we have need of in this place and in this hour. I thank you, God, for all you've done. And, Lord God, what uh, you will do. God, we're believing you uh, to speak to us through your word. Now, Lord, have your will. And have your way in what's said, what's done. May you get praise and honor and glory out of all of it. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. And we'll bless you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. 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 So as we begin to look here at this thought and at this uh, story, uh, we find that Samson uh, has now went down to go and get him a bride. And he, things didn't turn out just exactly how he thought that they would. Uh, let me remind us this. When you go against the will of God, you can expect some things to go wrong. When you go against the will of God, the Bible said the way of the transgressor is hard. And so when you go against God's uh, will in your life, you can expect uh, that uh, there's going to be a heartache that comes along with it. Do you think that God uh, has a will for your life so uh, that He can, you won't be happy? No. Uh, God has a perfect will for your life because he wants the best for your life. And Jeremiah 29 said, I know the thoughts that I, I'm thinking about you. I've got an expected end in mind. I've got it all worked out. I've got it all planned out. If we'll go according to his will, I promise you things will always go better. Amen. Goes right there. And so as we begin to think about that, uh, we think uh, and we see how that Samson uh, uh, has now uh, gone down and uh, uh, they're, they're getting ready to have this wedding. Uh, verse number 10 said his, uh, his father went down into the woman and Samson made their feast uh, for so used uh, young men to do. Uh, so there was a time and a uh, uh, a, a time and a season that uh, these people would go and have their wedding feast. And uh, there was a tradition that was behind it. There was a tra tradition uh, that was involved in it. Uh, just uh, real briefly, I don't have time to go through a whole lot of detail on this, but I think it will be helpful for us. Uh, the, the way that it typically was done is the groom's family would arrange uh, the wedding, uh, uh, part of that was that be that they would pay a dowry uh, to the bride's family. They were losing a daughter. They were use, losing a helper in the home. So they would pay uh, the dowry to that. Then a period of time would begin and what would be called a betrothal period, somewhat like being engaged nowadays, but more so there was a more of a binding uh, that was involved in it. It usually lasted for about one year uh, that they would have that. Then during that time, the bridegroom uh, would prepare a place uh, there where his family lived, where they were going to live. He would prepare a place uh, so that uh, they could live during that time. During that time, the bride would prepare her wedding uh, wardrobe, her wedding dress, all of that, and get ready for the arrival of the groom. At an unannounced time, typically this would happen late at night, the bridegroom would come for his bride. He would arrange that a feast would be ready. He would take his friends 
and they would go after the bride and they would go into town and they would uh, announce their coming by shouting, by blasts of the trumpet. Uh, he would take the bride, they would go back uh, to the, the place he prepared. Uh, the, 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 there would be the ceremony, this big feast, and then the marriage would be consummated. Uh, so that's the, uh, the tradition of how it all happened. And uh, certainly I don't believe uh, that Samson is a type picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, I believe it would do us well to take this and look at the typology that's involved in the wedding and the tradition that was involved there. Uh, there would be a feast that was prepared uh, and I'm glad, hallelujah, one of these days Jesus is going to come back uh, and he's going to call us home. Uh, uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, it tells the, uh, the, the parable of the five wise virgins uh, and the five foolish virgins, uh, uh, the ones that did not have the oil for their lamp uh, and they were supposed to be waiting for the bridegroom to come and get them uh, at any moment, at any time. And one of these days, hallelujah, uh, he has gone, the Bible said in John 14, uh, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. Uh, and if I go, I will, hey, hey, uh, I will come again uh, and receive you unto myself, uh, that where I am there you may be also. Uh, one of these days, uh, it could be today, uh, it could be tonight, uh, there'll be a blast of a trumpet, uh, and then we'll go to where he is. Uh, uh, there'll be a marriage feast, uh, uh, there'll be a time... Uh, and we'll live forever and ever with him. Bless his name. The wedding that's there. Now that's, that's what God designed. That's what God wanted. Um, we, we live in a society that pushes away anything the Bible has to say about how we should live nowadays. We live in a time frame that uh, people want to do what's right in their own eyes. In the book of Revelation chapter 3, I was uh, preaching around that on Sunday. The very meaning of Laodicea is the rights of the people. We want it our way. Nowadays, we've got people that play house. I mean, they just pretend they're married. They call themselves, that's my husband, that's my wife. And you don't see them, you see them in another six months to a year. They got a new husband and they got a new wife. But they never went and got married. They just play in the house. Mm -hmm. I believe that God had a beautiful picture in mind. God made it to where you and I, I would uh, uh, leave and cleave. We would leave our family, we'd leave our mother, we'd leave our father, and we'd cleave uh, to the husband, and we'd cleave to the wife. Uh, that's God's perfect design. That's God's uh, plan. Uh, Matthew chapter number 19, and I believe it's verse number 9, uh, talks about that. It said it's not so from the beginning. Uh, it was supposed to be one man and one woman. By the way, uh, it's still supposed to be one man and one woman. Uh, I don't care what society says about it. Uh, I don't care what the news media says about it. And I certainly don't care what Washington, D.C. says about it. Uh, my Bible still says uh, one man uh, and one woman. Well, praise the Lord. There was a typology involved. There was a, Samson's wedding started going wrong. Things started going awry there. Look at verse number 12. The Bible said, Samson said to them, I will now put forth a riddle unto you. If you can certainly declare it to uh, me within the seven days of the feast, Find it out, then I will give you 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. Now, verse number 13 says it, but if you cannot declare it to me, then shall you give me 30 sheets and 30 changes of garments. And so, I, we don't know why that Samson made this wager or this bet. I just, you have to imagine, the Bible said that there's 30 men, 30 guys that are given to be his wedding party, the bridegroom's party. He don't know these guys. 
they probably have heard of Samson, all of his exploit, and they, they, you know, I know how guys are. You ain't all that. You ain't, you just, just how big a boy are you? And I mean, they just, all that stuff, and then so Samson maybe just started talking junk. Because if you've been around men very long, that's what we do sometimes. Yeah. That's what we do a whole lot of times. It's just talk junk. I mean, I, the older I get, the better I was. It man goes right there. And uh, I, <laughs> you start talking all that smack. And maybe Samson was just talking smack. And said, all right, boys, if you don't think I'm all that, I'm going to tell you something. And if, if I get it wrong, I'm going to have to give every one of y'all 30. I'm going to have to go get 30 changes of garments and 30... Uh, 30 sheets and we're going to do all that. But if, if I'm right, I'm smarter than the rest of y'all. If I'm right, then y'all going to have to get that from me. He had this thing sewn up in the bag, he thought. And he began to make this bet or this wager. Maybe it was a little bit of pride involved. We're not prideful, are we? I mean, never would we be prideful. We never look at somebody and think, you big dummy. I mean, Maybe not y'all. Maybe y'all don't ever do that. But I'll just be honest with you sometimes. I think, hmm. Y'all, I, I, I will pray with you in the altar in just a little while, all right? Uh, there's some pride involved, uh, perhaps, in what the Samson had to say. Maybe there's some pride involved uh, in, uh, in his strength, in his feats of strength and what he wanted to do. Maybe there's a little bit of greed involved. Maybe he thought, well, I might as well make some money off these boys. I might as well get involved here and take them for what they're worth. Um, I heard about this guy that said um, the they had started going to uh, he, this man, his wife got married, and he was raised, he was raised up staunch, died in the wool, Southern Baptist. Well, his wife was an Episcopalian. Well, they got married, and he, he started going to the Episcopalian church. And uh, his grandmother, man, she is mad. She said, son, what's wrong with you? I raised you better than that. Why in the world? What is wrong with the Baptist church? He said, well, Grandma, Carol and I flipped the coin to see if we'd go to her church or to mine. Well, I lost, and so I got to go to church. And Grandma said, well, that serves you right. A good Baptist is who won't gamble anyway. Yeah, that's right there. <laughs> Mark Twain said it like this. There's only two times in a man's life he should not gamble. When he can afford it and when he can't afford it. Amen. Let me just pause right there. I don't think it's a very wise investment of the money that God gives us to go and gamble. You might not like it, but it's the truth. Amen. Uh, I believe God wants us to be good stewards over what he gives us. Uh, by the way, the best thing you can do with your money is invest it in the kingdom of God. Uh, go ahead and invest. Um, to, today I, I, I saw something that my friend uh, Brett Carr, I went to Bible college with, he had said. He said, sometimes it seems like all the doors are closed. But even when all the doors are closed, God leaves a window open. Malachi 3 and verse number 10. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, will I not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you cannot receive? I'm talking about Samson's wager. He thought he had this thing sewn up. He thought it was going to go his way. He thought everything was going to be just fine. But that leads us to this last one. Samson's wrath. Y'all don't get too excited because I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he went down to Ascalon and slew 30 men of them, took their spoil, and gave change of uh, garments unto them. And his anger was kindled and he went up to his father's house. But Samson's wife was given to his companion whom he had used as his friend. Now, here's what happened. Samson lost the bet, and when he did so, he had to go pay it. And so 
he goes down and kills 30 men, takes their clothes, takes the sheets, and brings them, pays his debt, and he's so mad that he don't even go to see his wife who got told the secret. He just goes home. I don't want to get real graphic here, but the, the, at the end, the end of the week, the seventh day, he was supposed to, they were supposed to consummate the marriage. He just went to the house. He said, I ain't got time for that woman. I don't want to mess with her. In his wrath, he killed 30 men. And he thought, it'd be all right. Everything's going to be okay. Look at the next chapter. But it came to pass. Within a while after, in the time of the wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. Now, he takes a goat. Figured that's going to make her happy. Now, fellas, I'm not here to give you a whole lot of romantic advice, but I tell you this, roses are a whole lot better than goats. Amen. Don't go tote no goat home to your wife when you've done wrong and in the doghouse. Uh, go and find you some roses. Go and find you some chocolate. Go and find you, praise God, get you a, 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 a red lobster gift card, something uh, to help you out. Amen. <laughs> but he thought, I'm going to take this goat and everything's going to be all right. He said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utter, utterly hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. And then her dad says, is not her younger sister fair? <laughs> her younger sister is prettier than her anyway, Samson. Fairer than she. Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. He thought, well, I just offer him that now. Think about this. Here's Samson. If you remember last week, he fell in lust with this woman. I said it right. He saw her, didn't even know her. He said, I gotta have her. And he goes through everything that he's gone through. The daddy thinks, well, he don't really love her anyway. I'll just let her let him marry the other one. It, she's prettier anyway. Didn't think there's probably very much emotion. Now, Samson probably was embarrassed, probably had some pride swell up in him. Look what the Bible says here in verse 4. And Samson went and caught 300 foxes, took firebrands and turned tail to tail. Heard somebody say this. You can take uh, two tomcats and tie their tails together, and they might be uh, united, but that don't mean they're in unison. <laughs> and look at verse number four. And put firebrand in between uh, in the midst between their tails. And when he had set the brands on fire, he let them go into the standing corn of the Philistines and burn up both the shops and the standing corns with the vineyards and the olives. Now he was mad, and he said, "I will get even." Have you ever? wanted to get even before? You ever tried to get even before? Hold on. Then the Philistines said, who hath done this? They answered, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite. You notice that? The son-in-law. They were considered married even though they never actually consummated. It was, a, it was a binding contract that they went into. Just like Joseph and Mary betrothed to be her spouse. And it was, even though they had not come together, they were as husband and wife. Uh, verse number six says this. Because he had taken his wife and given her uh, to his companion, uh, the Bible said there, the Philistines came up and burnt her and her father with fire. I'm talking about when beauty turns into bitterness. See, there's something in us that wants to hold on to what they did. 
to us. There's something inside of us that don't want to let them get by with what they did to us. But let me give you some good godly counsel here. Don't you dare hang on to what they did to you. Don't you dare hold on and rehearse and rehash everything that's happened to you. Let it go. Let God uh, give you and grant you forgiveness in your heart uh, because whenever you decide uh, that I'm going to get even, uh, I'm going to settle the score, you may very well be doing something uh, that starts uh, down a path uh, that you don't know how it's going to end. Uh, he, Samson thought, man, they they done me this way, so I'll take and get rid of their crops. I, I, I'll, I'll get even with them. What happened? Things escalated quickly. This girl and her daddy died because he couldn't get over it. He couldn't get past it. Let me ask us a question here tonight. I know there's not many of them. Can't think of how to think. How many of us or how many people have died spiritually around us because we couldn't get over it? Or maybe you know situations where somebody just could not get past something and people lay in wreckage and ruin in their path because of bitterness down on the inside of Bitterness that controls them. Bitterness that comes over them. It, I don't have time to go into it, but the latter part of chapter number 15, these, uh, these guys, after that they do this, Samson goes and he smites them. I think it says hip and thigh. That means he it utterly destroyed and wiped them out. And that didn't stop the problem, Miss Carolyn. Because the Bible said the rest of them went to Judah and they went and uh, said, you going to get Samson or we going to do what Samson did to y'all unless you bring him here. And so they delivered Samson. It was just a cycle. If you and I don't make up in our mind that we are going to forgive we're going to forget. We're going to let it go. We're going to let God deal with it. We're going to let God handle it. Then I promise you, uh, you're going to be dealing with that cycle over and over and over again in your life. Uh, I know this is not a popular thing. Uh, I know this is not necessarily what all of us want to hear uh, here tonight. Uh, uh, but this is what God told, told me to tell us. Uh, don't let the root of bitterness uh, uh, find a place down in your soul. Uh, uh, don't let what was beautiful uh, become bitter. Don't become uh, uh, like uh, a they owe me. Uh, where the Bible said I went out full. I, I came back empty. I, they used to call me pleasant. Now they call me mar. They call me bitter. They call me uh, having lost all. I, I said bless his name. God can help you. Yeah. Miss uh, Becky, if you'll come. I'll tell you a story. Some of you guys might remember this. While she comes before I get into that. Heard about a lady that had gone to a doctor. She was, oh man, she was bad sick. And they done all kinds of tests. And he said, ma'am, I'm sorry to tell you, but I'm afraid you've contracted rabies. The doctor left the room for a minute, came back. This woman's right on a piece of paper. He said, ma'am, are you, you, you're not going to die. Are you writing out your will? said, no, I'm writing a list of all the people I'm going by. In 1979, Daytona 500, 100,000 fans watched as Richard Petty was in a race to the finish with Kel Yarborough and Donnie Allison. Richard Petty had a 45 uh, race losing streak. 
going into this Daytona 500. And as they're finishing the race, coming around the fourth turn, going into the back straight, or to the straightaway there to go across the finish line, uh, there was a, a dust up and uh, Kel Yarborough, Connie, uh, Allison go into the infield and then they end up in the in the curve in the wall and Donnie Allison gets uh, or, uh, yeah Donnie Allison gets out of the car they both get out of the car and right there on the track have a fist fight while they're fighting guess who went trucking by and won the biggest prize up to then that had ever been won. $73,500. All because the ones that could have won the race was too busy, busy fighting. I wonder how many times Satan has laughed at us while he trucked it right on by. We're over in the corner fighting about this, fighting about that. Don't let what's beautiful turn into bitterness in your life. I want you to stand with me tonight. I want how many of us would come and say, God, I thank you. I thank you for the times in my life that you delivered me from a season of hurt, a season of bitterness. God, I want to thank you that, Lord, tonight I know that I know that one of these days the trumpet's going to sound. And just like that wedding, just like the bridegroom coming up the bride, you're going to come and get me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, how many of us come and find our place around an altar tonight and just say, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, that I can live outside of bitterness. Thank you, Jesus, that I can live in the beautiful things that you have for me, that you've prepared for me, that you've made for me, that you want for me. Oh, God, I want to tell you I love you and I thank you. I wonder how many of us have come and get around this altar tonight, call out to God on behalf of somebody else. Maybe somebody you know is going through an awful difficult season, an awful difficult time, and they need the help of God. Oh, it'd be a good time to call their name. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And I ask you, God, tonight, Lord, in our seasons that could bring bitterness. May God, we see the beautiful. May God, we see the blessings. Oh, Lord, we need you in this place, in this hour. I ask you, God, to touch every person tonight that, Lord, is struggling with areas in their life, their health, and whatever it is that's going on. Lord, I know that you're able. I know you can. Lord, have your will and have your way. Whoa, God, speak to us now and help us. God, if there's a root of bitterness, Lord, help us to allow you to get that out of our heart and out of our life. God, I don't want to spend my life fighting and fussing. God, I want everything that you've got for me. Lord, have your will and have your way. We love you. We bless you. God, we ask these things in the name that is above every name. In Jesus' name we pray tonight.